Good evening, one and all. Good evening, sisters and brothers. Welcome to this evening's evening prayer, Saturday, uh, June 13. And uh, it was a beautiful day today, and um, sun is still shining outside at this moment, as of this recording. And um, I trust that I trust that you enjoyed the day and um, and you had a bit of peace and productivity in your day today. And so let's um, say goodbye to this day and um, and seek God's grace through the night uh, to protect us and, and to sustain us. So let's begin with our evening prayer. <clears throat> oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fear beauty of the Lord, and to seek his will in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall hide me in his shelter, in the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me, and set me high upon a rock. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And that canticle was from Psalm 27. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and to set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Amen. And um, the, the psalm for this evening is Psalm 22. But before we do that, let's do our evening confession. It's always good at the end of the day to confess our failures, our um, sins, sin. Sin means to fail, to, to not meet the standard that God has given us. Given us. So um, we confess our failures today and seek God's help and forgiveness and pardon. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Amen. Psalm 24 is our psalm for this evening. Psalm 24. This morning it was 23. This evening it's 24. You'd think we're going through them like that, but it's not. <clears throat> psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? 
the one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? the Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Amen. Um, it's a, I, I just read one of the comment. From, there are two parts to this psalm. And I'll read the, the, the first bit. The pursuit of God. All money, talent, health, Power and pleasure in the world are God's. But the greatest treasure he can give us is life in his presence. His face, not the gifts of his hands, though they are welcome, is where we find the glory that other things fail to provide. To know his presence, however, is to ascend a hill or mountain and doing so is always a struggle. You must repent, seeking a clear conscience. You must know your idols and reject them, verse 4. And you must wrestle in prayer to seek God's face as Jacob did, who said, I will not let you go unless you bless me, Genesis 32. So this, I, I, I do like this. Um, um, Everything belongs to God, but we are not to seek the everything. We are to seek God. We are to seek His face. When we are to go into the up onto the mountain, the mountain is of course the place where is represent representative where the, where the temple was in Jerusalem. To going up to the temple was to go to the presence of God, and so to be saying it is a. It, is, it takes a certain amount of effort to go and see God's face. Um, to, to, it takes a clear conscience. It takes repentance. It takes getting rid of our idols. And it takes um, wrestling in prayer like Jacob. Let's pray. Lord, you alone are the fountain of the life and love we have looked for in other places. To our misery. We want to love you for yourself alone and know your fellowship and presence. That will be a long journey and a struggle, but we commit ourselves to you today. Amen. Amen. And um, the New Testament reading, reading tonight is still in the book of Romans. And we're in Romans chapter 6, from verse 15 to the end. Romans chapter 6, verse 15 to the end. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves... You are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. 
just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are of course looking at Paul's um, exposition of the gospel in in Romans, the, the 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 most the most comprehensive exposition of the gospel anywhere in Scripture, and so Paul is arguing here that there are two kinds of slavery. There is slavery to sin and there's slavery to righteousness or to God. And he says there was a time when the believer was a slave to sin. That is, we did what our sinful appetites desire without thinking. You see, we there was a time when we, we simply do what what comes naturally we simply do what feels good and feels right in our own eyes in those times we were slaves to our sinful appetites now he says we are no longer slaves to sin rather we are now slaves to righteousness verse 18 you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. And so he's saying that no, we are now to live a certain kind of life. We are to practice righteousness. We are to practice holiness. Because we are now, a, we are now slaves to righteousness. In other words, we now have a desire for God. We now have a desire to live a certain way of life. Because we have been transformed from within. So the, 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 we, are no longer, we are no longer captives to our sinful appetite. Rather, we are now captive to God. And that doesn't mean we don't sin, of course. But when we do sin, there is something in us that will prick us, that will torment us, that will... Will, will, will drive us back to righteousness because we are no longer slaves to sin. We are now slaves to righteousness. So, what benefit did you reap at the time from the things that you were ashamed of? Those things result in death. Paul is saying there was a time when we used to practice certain things. We used to do what our appetites want. We didn't get any benefit from it. Maybe we, get, we got our... Uh, short-term happiness. We got a certain amount of satisfaction at the time, but those satisfactions never last. And so he said those things always lead to death, either physical death, emotional death, uh, and, and of course spiritual death. You know, he said when you're, when you're a slave to sin and you practice certain sinful desires, certain sinful ways, all of that will simply lead to death. But now, he says, but now, verse 22, but now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. It's a big difference. No longer are we practicing things that lead to death. Death in our conscience, death in our relationships, death in our hearts and and eventually death in our lives, death in our bodies. He says, no longer are we practicing those things. Rather, now we practice the things that lead to holiness 
and eternal life. And the, the clincher verse, of course, that sums up everything so far. Two things. The wages of sin is death. That is the payment that sin gives us in our lives for practicing sin is death. Sin leads to death. The, the, if, we, if we continue down that road, we are going to die. Not just physically, not only physically, but spiritually. We are going to die eternally. But the gift of God is eternal life in, G, in Christ Jesus our Lord. So instead, God has given us the gift of eternal life. No longer are we slaves to sin that leads to death. But now God has granted us life eternal, uh, eternal life in Jesus Christ, so that we will not die, but live. That is, that is the message for tonight. Um, we will not die, but we will live if we practice the holiness, the righteousness that Jesus Christ gives us, uh, God gives us in Christ. Let's pray. Let's pray. So, Father, we thank you for this righteousness that you've given us. Lord, we thank you that you've rescued us out of sin. You've rescued us from our own sinful desires, from our own sinful appetites, from our own, from our own hearts. You have given us new hearts. And the Lord, even though many times we fail you, we fail you so many times. We fail you daily in living up to the standard. We know in our hearts that we are no longer slaves to sin. But now we, we have a desire to know you. We have a desire to live for you. We have a desire to gaze on your beauty. We have a desire for you rather than simply a desire for sinful behavior, sinful thoughts, sinful deeds. And so, Lord, we pray that you'll help us to, to, to live the righteous life that you've called us to live. You said we are now slaves to righteousness. Lord, make us in the kind of people who will live righteously, do that which is right and just and holy that you approve of in our lives, in our personal lives, in our corporate lives, in our social lives, in our family life. Help us, Lord, to live the life of righteousness, holiness, set apart for you. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of eternal life that you have granted us in Jesus Christ. We are grateful, Lord, that you snatched us out, out of death and have brought us into life. We give you thanks. Tonight, Lord, as we come to the end of this day, we thank you, we thank you for, the, for this day and for, we thank you, Lord, for, for sustaining us, for keeping us, for for being with us through every moment of this day. We thank you for answering our prayers, for hearing us, for, hear, for hearing our cries, for, for help, for whatever it is that's on our hearts tonight. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, that this day you heard us. And even if we haven't seen the manifestation of that of the answered prayer, we know that in your time we will see it because you have heard our prayer today. So Lord, we ask that even as we come tonight to, to say goodbye to this day, we bring before you, Lord, all those who are suffering, all those who are in pain, physical, emotional pain, those who are lonely tonight, those who are isolated, those who feel a sense of abandonment, feel a sense of loneliness. Lord, we pray for them tonight. 
So Lord, we pray that you go with us as we as we sleep. We ask for peaceful rest. We ask, Lord, that the cares of this day will be laid to rest at your feet. So that, Lord, we can sleep peacefully without worry, without care, without anxiety, and even without pain. Lord, we pray for those who are furloughed and those who have lost their jobs, those who have been made redundant, so many people during this time whose livelihood has been disrupted and have been lost because of this virus. And so, Lord, we pray for them tonight. Give them, give them a heart of comfort and peace and trust. Lord, Lord let them trust in you tonight that nothing will be able take that peace away from their hearts whatever it is they might be going through now lord we pray that we will bring it all to you so that we will sleep restfully peacefully without worry without nightmares without anxiety without fear lord we lay, lay it all to you tonight. And we, we entrust it to you, Lord. We cannot, we, 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 we do not control tomorrow. Lord Jesus, you told us we are not to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough problems of its own. We are to deal with today and entrust tomorrow to you. And so whenever this virus is lifted, Lord, we entrust it all to you. We entrust our lives to you for however long this lockdown continues, for however long we are in this state of panic and pandemic. We pray, Lord, that you'll give us grace to trust you and to bring our cares, our concerns, our worries, our fears to you. And so, Lord, we, we ask for your grace tonight, your all-sufficient grace. In our weakness, be our strength. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's say a few of the night prayers before we go. Guide us waking, O Lord and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, you now have let your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations in the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. O God, your unfailing providence sustains the world we live in and the life we live. Watch over those both night and day who work while others sleep and grant that we may never forget that our common life depends upon each other's toil through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, and drive far from it all snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell with us to preserve us in peace, and let your blessing be always upon us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life 
may rest in your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on us sinners. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on us sinners. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sin against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so let's listen to our theme song before we say good night tonight. And all being well, I will... Uh, well, you will see me in the morning, but I won't see you, but I trust that you'll be tuning in tomorrow morning at 11 for the service. So here is our theme song. bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and restful night. Amen. <laughs>